Hey everyone, welcome to our kids ministry lesson this week. Look, here's the thing. I, uh, we're gonna start, we're, well today really, the focus, we're gonna be talking about something that's really tall. And uh, you might think, hey, uh, I know there's that cross out front of the church and that's really tall and you're right. I mean, you see it behind me here, it's, it's pretty tall. But um, it's, believe it or not, not tall enough. We need to get to 28 meters. And uh, this thing, well, it's only about yeah, seven. Right, a little over seven meters, and we need to get to 28. So, um, hey, let's let's head into Kelowna. I know there's lots of tall buildings there. I bet we can find something that'll be 28 meters. Let's go. So, I think I found the spot. What you see behind me is a hotel in Kelowna, right? This thing measures in at about 30 meters. So, we're looking for 28. This is super close. Now, of course, I mean, I'm standing so much close to the camera, this probably makes me seem super tall. Forget all that, all right? We have this building. You've probably driven by it many times. Now, it's a big building. And of course, we've got in Kelowna, we've got all kinds of examples of really tall buildings, right? The city's springing up. There's some that are so much taller, but this one is a great one to keep in mind as we think, go through our lesson today and think about what does it look like to see something that's 28 meters high. All right, so you got this locked in. We're gonna hit the road and go to another spot. I brought us up a mountain to kind of help you see something. Uh, we've got a nice spot in Kelowna here where it's very kind of, well, the land below us is really flat and you'll see right, right there, right there is that building we were just looking at. Here's, here's why we're here. Our story this week is from Daniel chapter three. Right, you remember we talked about Daniel one last week, where you had Daniel, and then you had his three friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And they were growing wise, they were uh, honoring God in how they ate, and in the decisions they made with their life. Well, challenges come as they're living in the new land of Babylon. You see the king, Nebuchadnezzar, who we mentioned last week, he decides he's going to build a giant, absolutely giant idol. Like this thing is super tall. Let me read the description from Daniel chapter 3, okay? This is what it says. It says, King Nebuchadnezzar made an image of gold. Think about it. Gold. And he built it 60 cubits high. That's like just under 28 meters, okay? 60 cubits high and 6 cubits wide. All right, this thing's massive. So it's almost 28 meters high and almost 2.8 meters wide. That's like wider than I am tall, all right? And then he set it up on a plane. And this is why I came here to this spot to share this story with you, right? He didn't just like plant it in the middle of a city with lots of tall buildings, okay? Like if that building there was downtown Kelowna, it wouldn't seem so big, right? There's so much bigger buildings. But no, it's out here a little bit, and it, well, it towers above everything else. And that's what the king did, right? And we gotta remember, this is Babylon. They're the ancestors of the people who built the Tower of Babel. They knew how to build towers. <laughs> they knew how to build like big buildings in their cities. And so the king builds this idol, and it's 60 cubits, right? 28 meters tall. And then he sets it out on this plane, this like flat area of land where I imagine it just stood out like, well, like a sore thumb, right? Like you can't miss it. The people were talking about it. They'd be like, hey, did you see the idol? That, yeah, of course we see it. It's all we see. It's a taller than everything else, right? And so the people, uh, so the king wanted to make sure everybody knows where this thing is and everybody can see it. Well, that's not all. He wants to make sure that they worship this thing. So he makes it lock, right? When the trumpets blow, when the musicians make their noise, everybody has to bow down and worship this thing. So that's the new law. All right, that's the law, fine. But that's not just enough, right? Because you know, not everybody follows the rules. So he decides, let's do this. We're gonna make a big furnace, right? Of course, a furnace is, uh, well, it's got fire in it. It's for making heat. Right, it's like a giant oven. So they build this big furnace. And then they say, if you don't worship it, if when the music sounds and everybody's told to bow, if you don't bow, into the furnace you go. So, 
That's the new law, everyone gets it. Messengers is sent around the country. Everybody knows what the rule is. All right. Okay, time comes. Worship service, right? Musicians do their thing, the noise goes out. Everybody hears it. Everybody drops to the ground. They're laying out on the ground, but there's not one, not two, but three. Three tall bumps in the plane dwarfed by this massive, massive idol, right? Those three bumps had names. They were Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And I imagine that just as the tower was, or the, the idol was way taller than anything else around, those three men stood way taller than anyone else around. And there they are standing there. Of course, the king sees this, right? Message gets to the king. King, at work, the music played. Everybody, well, nearly everybody, you know, almost everybody bowed down. There was, there was kind of three guys. And I remember, we talked about it last week, right? Those three guys, along with Daniel, those three guys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were, they were in training, right? They were the ones the king picked to do great things for Babylon. So he decides he's gonna give them a second chance, you know? Maybe they missed the memo. Maybe they didn't know what they were supposed to do when the music sounds, so he goes to them, gathers them up, they have a chat, says, all right guys, fellas, you gotta listen. Here's the thing, music plays, everyone. Like, I mean, the king says, I mean, everybody bows. And they're like, mm, we have a problem with that. He says, look, we'll give you another chance, we'll just try it, music will play, you bow. If you don't, though, into the furnace you go. So, it's second chance time. Music plays, everybody all around the country whoom, bows down. Uh, everybody's in playing, everyone who hears the music, they're all bowing down, but there's one, two, three bumps standing above all the rest, refusing to bow. Well, that's it. King's gotta follow through, right? Like, you can't have this lawlessness in his country. Gathers them up, and he's mad now, right? He was patient at first, thought, okay, second chance, all that, all right. But now he's like livid, has them stoke the furnace up, make it super duper hot, hotter than anything. In fact, so hot, the guys working the thing end up like melting. They're, they, they die because of it, right? So the three dudes, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, rounded up, thrown into the furnace, um, but they didn't die, right? The king's just astonished, he's watching this, and he he's counts, not one, not two, not three, but four. Now there's like four people hanging out in the furnace, but he only, so he's amazed. So he uh, gets them hauled out. And the, uh, the Bible says in Daniel 3 that they come out of the furnace, and you know what? It says they don't even smell. Like not only are they not hurt, but they don't even stink like campfire. Like if you've ever gone camping, you've hung out around the campfire and someone throws some wet leaves on or something and it makes a lot of smoke. You stink like that. Like even, even though you're not in any danger of getting burnt, you smell like smoke. Well, these guys come out, they're so clean, they don't even smell like fire, they aren't singed, but the guys who threw them in died from the heat. So the king's like astonished. What's going on? And it turns out, they tell the king, you know what, it was an angel of the Lord. He was with us in the fire, he was protecting us. And so the king is just absolutely blown away and mesmerized by this. Let me read for you his response again from Daniel chapter three, all right? Okay. Uh, we got to get past his ridge. They replied to the king after they come out of the furnace. Um, wait, hold on. Uh -huh, uh -huh. No, that's all pre-furnace. I got to make sure I get down to the right verse here. Okay, verse 24. So the king leaps to his feet in amazement, and he asks his advisors, weren't there three men who we tied up and threw into the fire? And they replied, certainly, your majesty. He said, look, I see four walking around in the fire, unbound, unharmed, and the fourth looks like a son of the gods. He then approached the opening to the blazing furnace and shouted, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out, come here. And so they come out of the fire, right? And everybody, this isn't just the king who's witnessing this. This is all the satraps, prefects, and governors. So like all the leaders of the land, right? The king's advisors, all the important people in the whole country are right there, right? 
They saw that the fire had not harmed their bodies, nor was a hair of their heads singed. I gotta tell you, I have this tendency every summer when we're barbecuing, um, I, I tend to lose all my arm hair. It just seems to happen, I'll light, like the, I'll light the barbecue, poof, poof of fire. I've lost eyebrows, I've lost uh, lots of arm hair, knuckle hair, you name it, uh, I've singed it, right? And yet, that's just from coming too close to a flame. These guys were in the fire and not a single hair was singed, right? Okay, let me keep reading though, all right? Verse 26, so Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the fire, right? The satraps, prefects, governors, and royal advisors crowded around them. They saw that the fire had not harmed their bodies, nor was a hair of their heads singed. Their robes were not scorched, and there was no smell of fire on them. Then Nebuchadnezzar said, and this is really important, praise be to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who had sent his angel and rescued his servants. They trusted in him and defied the king's commands and were willing to give up their lives rather than serve or worship any god except their own. Therefore, I decree that the people of any nation or language who say anything against the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be cut in pieces and their houses be turned into piles of rubble for no other god can save in this way. And then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. Okay, so let's put aside the fact that the king has like huge like mood swings, right? It goes from like uh, like wanting to like kill Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to like praising them to like saying that anybody who says anything against those gods, all those people will be killed. Like that's extreme, all right? But here's the thing. Because Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were so faithful to God, right? They trusted God so deeply. And because they did that, they were able to witness to how great God was, not just to the king, but to every important person in the whole country. Because they trusted God, they were faithful to him, and they would not worship anything but the one true God. And I think that's an absolutely remarkable and important thing, uh, important example for us to follow, that extreme trust in God uh, and you know what? God didn't keep them from ever going in the fire. They still had to go through it, but God was with them in the middle of it. And that's really important for us to remember too. Hey, you know what? Speaking about heat, just standing out in the sun, and this is nowhere near as hot as the furnace, but just standing out here is causing me to like sweat like crazy. I'm just way too hot just being in the sun. I can't imagine what it was like for them in the fire, but, um, I need to get out of this sun and take a break. I'm gonna see you back in the classroom. Whew. It's great to be, it's great to be out of that heat. Look, here's the thing. If you remember last week, we talked about, um, that there was a, a our, our heroes, right? Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Benigno, they all demonstrated a really important thing for us. They demonstrated a self-discipline, right? Well, we've got a new word for us to learn today, and it's courage, right? When they, uh, stood up to the king when they refused to bow and worship. They were showing incredible courage because they knew the consequence of not doing so was going to be facing the furnace, right? And so courage is doing what is right even when we're afraid. Sometimes we think that we should, you know, we, we face fear. We think that it, you know, we've got, all got to face certain fears in our life. And, and, and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had incredible courage to do what was right, even though they were afraid. Guys, let me, uh, let me, let's turn to our memory verse for the month. And um, you're, you, you, if, you, if you watched last week, we're actually, um, uh, we're not changing the verse, but we're changing the translation because um, um, I, I think it might be a little easier for us to understand what it says when we look at it in this different translation. Here's what it says. It says, even a child makes himself known by his acts by whether his conduct is pure and upright, right? This is what we see with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Their actions, the, the decisions they make, the courage they display, show, reveals their character, okay? We know that they are people who honor God, people who are courageous, people who do the right thing because they do 
have done the right thing. So I want to leave us with that verse this week, guys, and the encouragement to be courageous. You know, that's something that the Bible encourages us with again and again and again is the importance of being courageous. So may you go this week and be courageous and do what is right, even if you're afraid. Have an awesome week.